Hi everyone, thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe below. All of the ad revenue that will be generated from this video will be donated to New Zealand charities. Today we're going to be talking about student loans and how they affect your ability to borrow. Now this can affect either first home buyers or property investors. If you're looking to buy a property at all, the bank does a calculation on how much you can borrow. And a student loan really affects that, but it doesn't affect it in the same way that a credit card or a higher purchase affects it. If you've got a student loan of 3000 or 300000 your payments are the same amount because it's based on how much you earn, not how much the debt is. Now that's quite different to a credit card that would change depending on how much you owe. So the calculation is roughly 12% of your income. And I know for the lower brackets of income that changes, you don't have to pay any student loan up to a certain point. But for most people, it's 12% of their income once they've earned about $14,000 or more. So on $100,000 of income, you would be paying roughly $12,000 per year or $1,000 per month, no matter what your student loan was. And this really frustrates some property buyers who might only have, say, $2,000 left on their student loan. They would say, well, look, I'm going to pay this off in a couple of months. Why is the bank still factoring this in in my income? And the fact is the bank has to calculate what you can afford today. It's a snapshot of today, and today you have a student loan. So if you've only got a couple of thousand dollars, you might consider paying that student loan off. That would then free up some of your income and allow you to potentially borrow more. But that payment can't be made if it affects your deposit. So if you are stopping that income hurdle, you've reached an income hurdle, you can't borrow any more because you haven't got enough income, you pay off your student loan, but that is not a good thing if you are then creating a deposit hurdle. You've used up your deposit to pay off your student loan. So there's a bit of a balancing act there and there's some fine calculations and you probably need to run through this with a mortgage advisor or the bank just to see how the numbers come out. How does it look if you pay off your student loan? But the fact is that student loans materially affect how much you can borrow because the bank takes that payment out of your income no matter what stage your student loan is at. I hope that's really clear. Leave some comments below about your thoughts or talk to your mortgage advisor about doing that calculation as to whether to pay off your student loan or leave it there and keep saving towards a deposit. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.